and welcome back to another awesome blender 3d modeling class with me ken mbessa it's always a pleasure to have you here and today i'm very thrilled because i'll be showing you how to model a realistic 3d gas cylinder in blender but the goal here is not to show you how to model the gas cylinder because you can easily go and download a gas cylinder from one of those 3d marketplaces the goal here is to show you the why behind every tool you will use in the class my goal here is to show you a sample 3d modeling workflow that a real 3d artist would use to model something in blender in fact i use this workflow all the time so it's much more than just modeling the gas cylinder by the time you finish this class you will have understood how some of the 3d items or objects you see in movie animations or commercials or video games are made in a software like blender it begins by understanding how to use the simple tools that blender offers like bevel and extrude to turn primitives like cubes and cylinders into complex 3d objects and if you've already tinkered with blender and familiarize yourself with the user interface this will be a good opportunity for you to understand how to use all those tools to model something in blender it's not just about making stuff it's not just about clicking and dragging objects on your user interface it's about understanding the why behind the tools you're using why use a specific tool over another and why is your 3d object behaving the way it's behaving when you use a specific tool we want to learn all that my name is ken as i've already mentioned and i've been using blender for the last almost two years now and i've been able to work on several different projects almost every week and that has enabled me to improve my blender skills and i want to share everything i've learned in that 18 month period with you showing you some of the things i wished someone showed me when i was just starting out so throughout this class i'll be your navigator i'll be your gps to show you around and help you not just build a gas cylinder but build a solid foundation in your 3d modeling journey so if you're as excited as i am why don't we go ahead and get started i'll see you shortly and welcome so this is the very first lesson and what we want to do is prepare our user interface before we get started with the modeling so the very first thing you will notice here is that i have this gizmo right here of course you will not have it because this is an extension or add-on for people who want to teach blender so this is to help you see what i've clicked on my mouse or what i press on my keyboard so if i left click it shows you that i've left clicked if i middle mouse click or right click if i press n on the keyboard it shows you that i've pressed n if i press n again it shows you times two and you get the drill next thing i want to do is go inside the shading options here and enable cavity and what that does is it makes the edges more conspicuous on your object on your primitives while you're working on them and that makes them a little a little more appealing to the eye now when you open up blender for the very first time you will see these three things a camera a light and the default cube so i just want to get rid of the camera and the light and we're left with the default cube but just in case for some reason you've deleted the default cube you can always shift a mesh cube and you've added that the final thing i want to do as we prepare to get started is get rid of the timeline because we're not going to be doing any animation so we need the entire thing to be a viewport to be a 3d viewport so i'll go i'll hover over this separation here and when we have that double sided arrow i'll join areas and click when inside this box so now we have this as the 3d viewport my assumption is that you've already taken some base very basic introduction to blender the blender user interface but just in case you haven't i'll keep that in mind 
uh, basic moves. If you want to rotate, hold down the middle mouse, middle mouse wheel. If you want to zoom in, you can just scroll in and out or hold down control and the middle mouse button as you push the mouse forward and backward and holding down shift you can drag the object together with the environment to move to other parts of the work area holding down shift and the middle mouse button so those are the basic configurations that i like setting up when working on a modeling project now we're ready to get started with the modeling so i'll see you in the next lesson and welcome back so now we're ready to get started with the modeling so to save time i had already gone ahead and searched for a reference image and this is what i came across and this is what i chose of course you will see different results depending on your location and just to make sure we're all on the same page i will provide this particular image right below this video player just look under the projects and discussions tab so with that said, I had already gone ahead and saved it inside my project folder. And now what I want to do is create a new editor. I'll just go up to this corner. And when the mouse cursor turns into that plus sign, I'll drag it and I'll change this editor into an image editor. You can change it into any type of editor you want. Currently, this is a 3d viewport editor and as you can see we have so many depending on what you're working on so because we want to import an image this should be an image editor and i'll click open i'll go inside my project folder where i saved the image open image and there we go so at least we can have something to look at and then work on the left now i just realized we're working on a cylinder so we won't need this cube let me just select and delete it then shift a mesh add a cylinder instead of a cube cylinder that's a good starting point and before you click away from this we have this option right here if you click away it disappears and you won't get it again so you will have to delete that shift a cylinder and now if you click that we have some options here that i want us to take advantage of for example i want to change the vertices to 64 and that just increases the number of vertices around the primitive now with that i want to hit ctrl s to save and i'm inside the folder where i want to save my project so i'll just give it a name gas cylinder enter and now it's saved so right before we do anything else i want to show you right now we're in you perspective view if we use any key on the numpad on your keyboard for example one we will change to orthographic view if i hit five this is what we call the orthographic view and if i hit five on the numpad once again we change to perspective view as you can see there is that perspective showing distance but if we hit five we have no perspective so if i hit five once again perspective view now if we want to view this object from the front the front is this side going back we can use the number one on the numpad like that so that means we're viewing it from this side if we want to view it from this side which is the right side we can hit three on the numpad now we're in the right orthographic view one is the front orthographic view and seven is the top orthographic view now whatever view you're on if you hit nine you will view the opposite side so now we're viewing the bottom orthographic if we go to three we're viewing the right orthographic and if we hit nine on the numpad now we're viewing the left orthographic same case applies to one front orthographic and nine takes us to the back orthographic that's very important to help you navigate 
and view your model from different views for more control. I just wanted us to get familiar with that and prepare this space, understand how to add a primitive and understand the different perspectives we have while we're working. In the next lesson, let's now actually start working on the mesh. I'll see you shortly. And welcome back. So now that we understand orthographic view versus perspective view, we've understood how to add primitives. I think we're ready to get started with the actual modeling. So now one thing you will notice about this cylinder is that it has this curve on the sides and the same case applies to the bottom. So we need to give this those curves. So if I hold down control in the middle mouse button, holding it down, I'll be able to come closer or bring it closer. And if I click away, now that we don't need this, if I click away, it'll disappear and goodbye to it. So now the next thing we want to do is select this and I want to switch to the front view with the number one on the keypad, hit G to grab it. And now to constrain it to just the Z axis, that's up and down, I'll hit Z and that means it will only move up and down. And I want to put it right on the floor, which is where we have the red line. And when we get close to where we want it, we can hold down shift to move it in very small increments in order to really place it where we want it. Now, one very important thing you always need to keep in mind is applying transforms. Now, if I hit the N key on the keyboard, you will notice here we have location, rotation and scale. And whatever we do on this primitive or any primitive we have here will we'll change right here. So if we increase the size, if I hit S, it'll change the scale. If I rotate it by hitting R, it'll change the rotation. And if I move it with G, it has changed all that. Let me just undo everything. Now, remember we've moved it to the floor. So you will notice here we moved it in the Z axis and now the Z axis is not zero. Everything else is the default value because we've not rotated it scaled it up or moved it in the X or Y axis. We moved it in the Z axis only. Now, whenever we make any of those changes here, we need to apply those changes. So I'll hit control A. You can apply location, rotation, scale, or all transforms, meaning all of them. So I'll apply all transforms. Now you will notice this has changed back to zero. Now, the reason why we need to apply whatever changes we make here is to tell Blender this is the new state of this primitive so that when we're making any changes to the underlying data by going inside edit, Blender will not make those changes based on the previous place or state it was in. It will make the new changes you want to make based on the new the new location, rotation and scale. And I want to quickly illustrate that with an example. So let me first of all delete this. We're going to get it back and don't do anything for now. Let me, let me just show you what I mean. So if I delete that and add a cube, for example, then G, Z, let's push that cube upwards. So first of all, we notice we've changed the Z axis. Now let me scale it down in the Z axis. So I'll hit S for scale and now in order to scale it down only in the Z axis, I'll hit Z that's up and down. So there we have it. Now let's say I want to have a bevel right here on this edge and you will learn about bevels. If I go inside edit mode by hitting tab or just coming here and selecting edit mode, if I select the edges, edge selection, face and vertice selection. So now I've selected edge selection. If I hold down shift and select that, 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 now we have all the top edges selected. If I hit control B to add a bevel, 
this bevel doesn't look exactly how i want it because it seems to have this side longer than the height and i want an even bevel let me show you what kind of bevel i'm looking for so if i hit a cube that's another cube added g z and let me just drag it along the x-axis so g and then x for the x-axis only and let me also make it short in height so s for scale then z to scale it down in the z-axis now those are two primitives now notice what we've changed x and z axis location and the scale so now the scale in the z axis we've changed the scale so now if i control a and apply all transforms you will notice everything has gone back to default everything is now zero zero and the scale is one 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 so this tells blender now this is the new state and size and rotation of this primitive whatever changes you make in the underlying data in the vertices faces and edges should be applied with reference to this new state but when we were applying changes to this one we told we did not tell blender it has a new state scale and location so when it applied that bevel it applied it thinking it was the original cube not the new primitive that we had resized and moved so to show you that if i select this and hit edit if i select this edge and this and this now we have all those edges selected if i hit ctrl b to bevel now this is the kind of bevel i was talking about if i hit a to go to the front view you will notice this is a bevel that's more evenly shaped so you need to keep that in mind whenever you think your mesh is not behaving as expected you've probably not applied one of those different transforms so that's just a quick overview of why you need to apply transforms it's one of the parts that beginners tend to miss out on and they wonder why their meshes are not behaving how they think they should behave let's meet in the next lesson to start modeling this so i'll see you shortly and hey, welcome back after that segue where we went and saw why we needed to learn how to make transforms, it's time to resume modeling this. So I'll select these two and delete them. And now let's add our cylinder once again. So shift A, cylinder. Let's go to the front orthographic view, select it, G, Z. There we go. So now, of course, we've changed the Z location. So I need to control A, location. And that changes it back to zero. And I want to right click, shade auto smooth. That just smooths it out. Save, control S. So now we want to make this curved right here on this edge, like this main cylinder here. So with this selected, I'll hit tab to switch to edit mode now we're in edit mode and i'll switch to edge mode it's already on edge mode so i won't need to change that i'll select that edge and instead of holding down shift and selecting this and this and this i'll hold down shift alt and click and that will select all edges along that loop now i'll do the same while holding down shift i'll select just one edge Hold down shift, zoom in with the mouse wheel. I'll select, hold down shift, select this edge, then hold down shift alt and select that. Now we have both the top ring and the bottom ring selected. And because we applied our transform, if we hit control B, we can create a bevel. And before I release that, I can scroll up to increase the number of segments to give it that curvy edge. I think that's a good spot right there. We're just eyeballing it. We're not trying to be extremely accurate. 
control s to save if i hit tab to switch to object mode there is our cylinder the next thing i want to do is create the base so i'll select this hit tab to switch to edit mode and i'll switch to the front view front orthographic view and i'll hold down control and the mouse wheel holding it down pushing it forward to zoom in and i want to select the bottom segments like that and the problem with that is if i rotate we still haven't selected the areas in the back so if i switch to the front view i want to hit alt z to make it transparent and that means now we can select the areas behind as well so alt z so now to switch back to non-transparent mode you can also select this it's the same move so alt z alt z and now i want to duplicate it by holding shift d and now we've duplicated it i'll hit escape to drop it exactly where it is and while it's still selected i'll hit p to separate it from this other mesh so p selection that means now it's its own separate mesh or object so if i switch back to object mode now we have two objects this and this one so now let's switch back to the front orthographic view i want to say rotate 180 degrees just like that now i want to hit g z and put it right there switch to edit mode and now that we can see what's behind this i'll hit alt z once again transparent mode and select these i'll say delete faces in fact let me switch to vertice mode and select these vertices as well delete vertices and there we go alt a alt z to switch away from transparent mode and there is our cylinder so now we're going to make a few more improvements on this as we go on but for now i think we'll stop there in the next lesson let's see how to create this top ring i'll see you shortly and welcome back so now it's time to create this top railing but one thing you will notice about this body here is that it's protruding unnaturally below the base so if i switch to the front orthographic view and switch to transparent mode by clicking this you will notice right here that the body is almost touching the floor so we need this to move up by selecting that g and then z to constrain it to the z axis just like that and we need to make this a little bit taller so i'll select it s z and you will notice uh, if i hit escape you will notice the origin this small dot is outside the mesh or the object itself but we want it in the middle of the object because anything you do to an object happens in reference to its origin so if we try to scale it it'll scale it with reference to the origin and so if you want the scaling to behave as we want it it needs to be in the middle of the object so while the object is still selected look at this dot if we go inside object object set origin to geometry now it's in the middle of the geometry now if we hit s z it'll grow from the center so i'll hit g z and if we move to opaque mode you will notice this base is larger so let's make it smaller so that it touches the cylinder and i think that's a good spot at least that's better so let's select this and switch to edit mode 
and I want to select this edge loop. So switch to edge selection mode. Let me select that. Hold down Shift Alt. That will select that entire loop. Shift D to duplicate it. And while it's still selected, P to separate it and make it its own object. Hit selection. And now if I switch back to object mode, as you can see, we have this as an object on its own. So now what I want to do is go into edit mode for that specific line, just like that. And now if I hit A to select all the edges, I can extrude by hitting E, then Z to constrain it to the Z axis. Just like that. And now, as you can see, it seems to be protruding inwards or curving inwards. So I'll hit E to extrude once again and then escape while it's still there. It'll drop it there. But now we can hit S to scale down that ring just like that. All right. And now if we want to add this curve, we can select this edge, hold down Shift Alt. That will select the entire edge, Control B. And there is our curve. So if I hit Tab, we'll switch back to Object Mode. And I can hit Control A to apply all transforms. As you can see, we had moved it. So Control A, Location then right click shade auto smooth just like that control s the next thing i want to do is select it uh, switch to edit mode and what we want to do is create these holes four holes but before we do that let's first of all create this top line that runs across every hole and to do that, uh, let's switch to the front orthographic view. Control R. I'll put it just slightly above the center. Uh, let's say somewhere there. And now what we want to do is, remember we had 64 segments on this cylinder. And of course, this also has 64 segments because we duplicated a single edge loop from it. So it has 64 segments. That means we have an even number. If I switch to face mode and select four faces by holding down shift, those are four faces. And on the other side of this line, select four more. That means we have eight faces selected in the front. Let's go to the back by hitting nine on the numpad. Let's do the same, but hold down shift first to make sure you still have these front ones selected. So if I hit nine, hold down shift, I can continue selecting four, one, two, three, four. And let's switch to right orthographic view. Let's do the same, hold down shift. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If I hit 9, we'll go to the opposite side, the left orthographic. Hold down Shift. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So now we can remove those. You can add more faces if you want, but make sure they are even. But now I think I have enough faces to make the holes that I need. So I'll just hit Delete. Faces. There we go. Control S to save that. If I hit tab, it's starting to take shape. It's even easy to tell that this is a gas cylinder now. But of course we need to add all these details, including the weld and this top part. But before we even go there, we need to make this thicker. And we do that by adding a modifier. Now in Blender, Modifiers are found under this wrench icon. So if I click this wrench icon, 
you see here we have add modifier so first of all i need to select the item i want to add the modifier to that and then if i hit add modifier as you can see we have modify generate deform and physics modifiers these are different categories but all of them are modifiers now the topic of modifiers is very long so we can't go deep into it but just know that modifiers basically affect the data that's the edges vertices and faces that make a primitive so we can call this the primitive and these are the things that make it and these are the data so modifiers affect this underlying data to make the primitive behave differently so to make this thicker we can add a solidify modifier and as you can see the moment we did that it already became thicker so let me just undo that then redo with shift Control z as you can see it's thicker and we can increase the thickness here now it's much thicker so let's reduce it to 0 0.02 we can also do the same to this let's also make it thicker solidify two and let's do the same to the bottom let's give it a solidify modifier let's give it two just like that Control S and we will add this crack right here this joint a little bit later right now I think this marks the end of this lesson we've added the main body the base and the top rail in the next lesson let's start adding all these details I'll see you shortly it's time to add some of these details to make it more realistic for example let's add these holes to the base so selecting that and let's switch to front orthographic view i want to switch to edit mode with tab in fact i want to add a, an edge loop right here to make this a little bit curvier so let's add an edge loop Control r click once again to commit let's switch to transparent mode and let's increase the size of that ring slightly so s but hold down shift to move in smaller increments just like that and we can bevel that Control b that makes it a little a little bit more curvier in fact let's carry them g z now let's select this edge loop right here select that edge hold down shift alt that will select the entire edge loop g z z up to that point let's make it bigger holding down shift Let's try to make it as straight as possible to avoid edge shading issues. Yeah, just like that. Now, let me select vertex selection mode. And I want to select this vertex. Let's switch back to opaque mode. And I want to select this front vertex. Let's switch to the opposite side, the back side, while the other one is still selected. Let's hold down Shift and select this one. Let's switch to 3 on the numpad. Now we have these two selected. Select this one as well, holding down Shift. 9 on the keypad. Hold down Shift. Now we have all the four of them selected. Let me zoom in. We want to create holes. So I want to hit Control shift b That will bevel that vertex or those vertices and I want to scroll downwards with my mouse wheel and we want to change this to 0 0.1 0 0.1 and let's increase this to 5 and you will notice here that this circle is oval 
which tells us that we did not apply transforms to this base because this should be a perfect circle so let me undo that switch back to object mode control a apply all transforms now that we have all transforms applied let's switch back to that edit mode shift control b and now that's a perfect circle so as you can see this is why we need to apply our transforms when we move um, an object or rotate it or scale it you need to apply the transforms otherwise whatever we try to do with the vertices edges and faces will not be what we expect so now at least you've seen a practical reason so with the four of them selected of course we can hit delete faces and now we have perfect holes if i hit tab and switch back to object mode there we go let's switch back to edit mode and one I want to switch to transparent mode so we can select all these circles up to that point and I want to hit G Z because we want to push them up just a little bit there we go Alt to Z to switch to opaque mode and now we have our holes let's also create this top hole so while this is selected i'll hit edit mode now let me switch to face selection mode select that hit i to insert that face just like that if i zoom in so that's this edge if i hit i again we will insert it once again and now we can push that up so with this still selected g then z to constrain it to the z axis like that and then as you can see it seems to be extruded upwards so i'll hit e on the keyboard to extrude upwards then it seems to be inset once again so i insert it then let's extrude downwards extrude for e for extrude let's extrude downwards so if i rotate it like that i think that's cool so in fact i can just delete that face because of course that's an opening and if i hit tab now we have that opening let's hit ctrl s to save our progress so far so that's all for this lesson we added these holes and that top opening in the next lesson let's add this bolt or nut so i'll see you shortly let's go ahead and create this very quickly now one good thing about blender is it comes preloaded with several add-ons that can be very helpful that can save you a lot of time and we're about to use the first one so now what i want to add is something called bolt it's an add-on that generates nuts and bolts so that you don't need to model your own nuts and bolts so let's go inside edit preferences add-ons and let's look for bolts it's called bolt factory in fact i have I already have it activated so look for bolt factory and save preferences then close that now when you say shift a under mesh you will notice we have bolt and let me zoom out we've added a bolt so the first thing we can do is say we want this to be a nut not a bolt so that gets rid of that rod the next thing we want to do is of course hit s to make it much smaller then g to grab it z to constrain it to the z axis then let's place it there hit the dot on the numpad to go straight to that particular object that's how to go to the specific objects that is selected 
if I'm here and I want to come close to this, I hit the dot on the numpad. All right, so dot, let me make it smaller. Much smaller. And I think in order to create its body, we can pick something from this here. So with this selected, I'll switch to edit mode and I'll select this edge. Let me just zoom in on this. Switch to edge mode, select this edge, hold down shift alt. That will select the entire loop. Shift D to duplicate it, then escape to drop it right there. I'll hit P to separate it and then tab and I'll select the ring itself. Let me hit S to make it smaller. Wait, uh, its origin seems to be away from the center. Its origin seems to be at the center of the main cylinder. So with it still selected, I'll go to object, set origin to geometry. Now it's in the middle of the ring. If I hit S, I can make it smaller like that. And if I hit tab, I'll switch to edit mode, which means I can select everything. Hit E to extrude upwards. Z to constrain it to the Z axis. And in fact, I think here we need to insert it. And the reason it seems to be thick, remember, is because we had a solidify modifier applied to this body that we've just duplicated it from so this still has the modifier let me just apply oh let's switch to object mode first and then let's apply that and now with that applied we no longer want to use the edges we want to use the faces because this is now an entire mesh so let's go ahead and select the face selection mode. So let's select that face, uh, hold down control to select everything between whatever you click. So if I select that face, hold down control and go to select another face, Blender will select everything in between. And we can repeat that, everything in between, just like that. And now, Let's go ahead and say S to make it smaller. Maybe up to that point. Extrude in the Z. Extrude it once again. Uh, maybe let's select all these faces. Remember, we're winging this. We're not trying to be perfect or reproduce this exact thing. Just trying to add our own creativity here. Let's say S, oh wait, uh, let's say extrude. And now that we've extruded it, escape, and then S to increase the size of that, just like that. And now let's select all these faces once again. Holding down control, to select everything in between them. Just like that and then extrude in the Z up to that point maybe uh, let's make it smaller then extrude in the Z maybe up to that point now we'll leave that there oh wait to isolate whatever object you're working on, you can always hit the numpad forward slash like that. You've isolated it. I want us to select all these, holding down control. And now we can unisolate those others. And I want to switch to transparent mode. Alt Z, extrude E downwards and now it's going downwards in the z axis 
it's tapping into the gas inside the cylinder Ex escape transparent mode with alt z and hit tab to switch to object mode now you will notice it's not smooth so first of all let's apply all transforms as you can see the scale is different and the z-axis so Control a apply all transforms then shade auto smooth just like that now you will notice this is not that tall the nut itself so but it's wide so i'll say s z to make it shorter but let's make it larger in the other axis so s and to make it larger in the x and y and not in the z not in the height i'll hold down shift and z the axis i don't want it to grow in and now it will grow in all axes except the z just like that then i'll hit g to grab it z let's push it downwards i think up to that point uh it looks good Oh, that's too big so let me say s there we go okay s z just increase the height a bit there we go control s so now that we're done with this burner i think the next thing we need to do is work on the welds see these weld marks Let's go ahead and make those in the next lesson. I'll see you shortly. And welcome back. So now we're almost done with the gas cylinder. And of course, as you can see, this is a little bit shorter than ours. We can always just make it short by selecting it. Then S, Z. But wait, our origin seems to be misplaced. So we need to put the origin in the middle of the object. So while the object is selected, set origin to geometry all right so that means as you can see it's not really in the middle of the geometry and that's because we need to apply this z transformation so apply all when you apply transforms the origin is always sent to the center of the world right there center of the entire world so to put it back in the middle of the selected object now we go to set origin to geometry wait what's happening uh, let's go ahead and first of all apply this modifier and now set origin to geometry all right I don't know why it's behaving like that but let's just go with it at the end of the day we know what we want to do so zoom in s z and now we've made it shorter select everything g z pull it down like that let's make this slightly smaller so you can touch the edges one g g z there we have it we can also push this down together with this G Z G Z let it sink in like that I think I'm satisfied with the shape of it say that so now we're just about to finish this but before we finish, we need to add these welding details around. So without wasting any more time, let's select this main body. And I want to switch the front orthographic view. And hit tab to switch to edit mode. Let's add an edge loop up here, up to that point. And let's add another one right below. Doesn't necessarily have to be equal size, but make it as close to equal as possible. 
Next thing I want to switch to the face selection mode. And I want to select all these faces all round. So we want to select all these faces just like that. And of course you can tell where we're going with this. We want to separate, we want to duplicate that shift D and now it's duplicated and we want to hit P to separate it. So now it's its own element or object. And with that, we want to switch to edit mode while that ring is selected. So I'll hit tab, select everything. Let's zoom in. And I want to extrude just like that. Hit escape to leave it in place. And then S to scale up just like that. Awesome. So now if we escape by hitting tab, I want to hit Ctrl S to save, then Ctrl A to apply all transforms. And now I want to go back in edit mode. Let's bevel only these edges. So let's switch to edge select mode by hitting two above the keyboard, not the two on the numpad. These other two right above your keyboard. 1, 2, and 3 helps you switch between these three modes. So right now, this is option 2. So Alt-Shift to select the entire loop. And this one as well. Then Control-B to bevel them, just like that. Then scroll up to increase the number of cuts. I've increased them to so two all right then i'm going to hit a to select everything right click subdivide right click subdivide i think that's enough for now because the reason we're subdividing it is because we want to use sculpt mode we want to use sculpting brushes to create an uneven surface that looks like a welded surface and we can't do that on a mesh that's not highly subdivided. But just make sure you don't subdivide it too much because the more you subdivide a mesh, the more resource intensive it becomes and your machine might not be able to handle too many subdivisions. All right, now with that, I want us to switch to sculpting. Then the next thing I want us to do is come in here and check Dyne Topo or Dynamic Topology. And let's open up this drop down menu. We want to change this to Brush Detail. And let's leave it at 25%. Smooth Shading. Let's leave it at On. Let's also reduce the radius of this brush slightly. Let's reduce the strength slightly. Let's look at the texture. We want the texture to be, let's try tiled. Tiled is also good. So what we want to do is just basically make it an uneven surface like that. looks like a welded surface that's also painted on top so it has some smoothness although you can see uneven bumps below the paint we're going to see that when we add texture to it so i think that looks awesome you can continue playing around with these uh, different settings here to see if you might get different results. This is just a guide. So I think basically what we have is satisfactory. Exactly. And if you want to learn more about Dyne Topo, I suggest you Google it and find out 
more about why we use that in topo to add textures because you will notice if i hit tab to switch to edit mode we have a triangular mesh rather than a rectangular or squared mesh why is that that's because of dying topo it dynamically adds topology hence dying topo dynamic topology adds extra meshes as you work with brushes in the sculpt mode but i'll not go into detail on how that works behind the scenes so now switch back to object mode and while this is still selected i want to scale it down slightly because it's protruding too much so i want to first of all make it slightly taller and as you can see we need to apply transforms because no let's just move the geomet origin to geometry to the center of the geometry let's scale it up in the z-axis like that let me zoom in let's scale it down in all sides except z the z-axis so first of all let me switch back to the layout to the layout tab here so you can see these keys i want us to be here so we can see the side then scale hold down shift z to make sure you're not scaling in the z axis and we just want it to sink into the body like that so that it looks more realistic so I think we have some nice weld right there. But before we do that, let's go in here and create these welds as well. So remember now I've hit tab so we can go into edit mode on this. And I want to isolate it for a second so we can select these edges. After selecting this, I'll hold down control to select everything in between. Hold down shift. Then hold down control, shift to continue, hold down control, shift, hold down control. Now we have all of them selected. Shift D to duplicate them. Then P, selection. Then let's escape with tab to edit mode. Let's select the edges we've just separated s to scale and as you can see we need to bring the origin to the center so object set origin to geometry s let's say g z to push them to the top so that when we unhide these other parts they won't get hidden below so now while these are still selected i want us to scale them down s holding down shift for finer movement and once that one that inner part is inside this rail we can let go of it then g z holding down shift down shift for finer movement switch the front view like that i think we're good now now switch to tab mode uh, edit mode with tab select everything then extrude in the z axis want to extrude up to that point then i'll hit let's rotate uh, all right so let's make it smaller s once again we want it to sink into that just slightly and below here g z all right so now it's sunken all right uh control a apply all transforms shade auto smooth and now we're going to repeat the same process we did right here so tab to enter edit mode oh and wait remember we if i exit if i exit um let's go to modifiers remember we duplicated this from this rail and this rail had a solidify modifier so let's apply the solidify modifier 
and you cannot apply a solidify modifier while you're in edit mode you have to be in object mode so let's apply that now this becomes a mesh so now i want to select all the edges with shift alt of course uh let's hit forward slash on the keyboard on the numpad because i want to select all these edges at the top and the bottom so let's also select the the bottom outward facing edges because we want to bevel them remember we cannot have that fine edge and now while those are still selected let's unhide everything control b to bevel this thing just like that holding down shift for fineness and then select everything with control a right click subdivide let's subdivide once more i think that's enough yeah so now let's switch to sculpt mode and while we're in sculpt mode let me scroll here to reveal dying topo let's enable that 25 percent brush detail and let's start working on this just go ahead and repeat what we just did down here just looking at this you can see it's not even going all the way to the end because that's how people naturally weld these are the details that make it more convincing more realistic because we could have left it without the welding marks but then it wouldn't look so realistic all right so there we go let's switch to add here to add some some little bit of topology just like that and remember what we're doing in this class and all my other classes is basically trying to learn how to use the most commonly used tools it's up to you to keep practicing every single day with the tools you learn how to use in this class while we're working on very basic items like a gas cylinder to be able to make things like mechanical objects like robots you're so you're just getting used to using these tools now you will notice here we have more weld weld marks i'm assuming that's how this base is attached to the main body i will leave that to you as an assignment you can add those weld marks the same way we've done here and now with that i think we're almost done one more thing let's add textures let's add a color to this gas cylinder so it looks realistic so but before we do that let me just do one more quick thing let's add this crack here or this joint seems like this was a metal sheet that was folded and joined here so let's switch back to object mode i'll select this rail uh let's switch the front and now we're in the front i want to select this the center edge all the way from there holding down control up to there there we go in fact what i want to do is uh control r i should not say like that control r so i can create an edge loop holding down shift there we go then i'll switch to face selection mode with three on my keyboard above my letters then i'll select all these holding on control delete faces now we have that space but i can select uh let me switch to edge mode select this edge all the way up to maybe this edge holding down control g holding down shift 
I'll join them like that and now we have that gap just like that control s to save it so there we go now in the next lesson let's see how to add textures the color the material the finishing i'll see you shortly and welcome back so we're almost done with our modeling project but one more thing to go we need to add a texture or the material that's what we call all that right here in blender now we can go the full way and work with nodes or add materials here but that's a whole topic on its own that needs a class dedicated to show you how to do that on the other hand as you go on using blender you will realize that you can really really speed up your work by using add-ons blender comes preloaded with several add-ons and there are also other amazing third-party plugins or add-ons that we can download and bring in 3d models textures and brushes into blender now i like using a very special plugin called blender kit and i'm going to show it to you right now so let's google blender kits this is a free add-on and it brings you world-class textures materials everything so you will go here to blender kit and download it and i'm going to show you what it can do these are all the things it can do for you it can bring you people human models cars houses hdris textures and everything to speed up your work now of course i recommend you take your time to learn how to add materials and textures without using any add-ons i've already taken time to learn all that but i rarely make any materials myself i just go to blender kit and download them and let me show you what i mean by that so now you're right here you can go to where do we download it download blender kit i already downloaded it once you've downloaded it let's go to edit preferences install i'm going to my to the place where i put my blender kit there we go it's a zip file so when you download it it's going to be a zip file save it somewhere and when you save it follow the path we've just followed that's preferences edit preferences install let me go inside assets blender kit install add-on and let me enable it okay save preferences and let me close that so when you install it this is what you'll get let me just collapse this because we don't need this anymore join areas so this is what you will see and you can collapse it by clicking this eye so you can have more screen real estate to expand it and now here we have models see you can download all these different models instead of modeling them yourself but i like modeling specific models that will be the center of attraction in a scene but for background models that the camera will not be focusing on i fill them up with models that i've downloaded through blender kit we also have materials this is what i was talking about all these materials imagine having to create these materials yourself you don't want to spend time trying to create all these materials when you can just import them but it's good for you to learn how to create materials when you have time so in here we want to say maybe red paint uh paint and here we go different red paint we're looking for something that can be this is painted plaster let's try and see what let me let me select that and let's see what it looks like when we add that material now we're, we're in solid mode we want to switch to let's switch to render view to view in render view we need to have some light in the environment so let's just switch back to uh, what's this called material preview yeah so let's switch to material preview i can select this give it that material as well that
as you can see it's already started taking shape even the world itself looks very realistic we can give this a metallic texture so metal let's give it that metal material like that let's give this maybe that now let's give it this material even this so there we go I like it control s so now we're just about to finish but before we go we need to do some final touches so for example uh, let's switch back to solid mode and remember we applied a solidify modifier to this and of course you can see by going to this wrench icon here so essentially what a modifier does is it changes the appearance of the object without changing the underlying data the faces the edges and the vertices and so if we go back to edit as you can see we still have a plane this is a plane it's not a thick an actual thick mesh because if i zoom in on this as you can see we cannot select this is not an edge here but this is the edge so this edge has been made to appear thick without actually making a thick mesh so that's called non-destructive modeling and you will learn more about it as you learn more about modifiers but we cannot go deep into all that so now if we're satisfied with the thickness we've applied to this mesh we can go back to edit object mode select apply now we've applied that modifier so now if we switch back to edit mode now this is an actual mesh and everything can now be edited so now we can pick let me switch to face mode and select the interface and as you can see out here we don't have any face selected because we're in the outer side but before we couldn't select the inner side of the thick mesh all right so now with that the reason i wanted us to apply that modifier the solidify modifier was because we could not select these edges and i need us to select them that edge and this other edge and what we want to do is hit control b to bevel that and scroll upwards there we go so as you can see there is a difference between that and this this looks much better so now let me just undo everything i've done now we've returned the solidify modifier that means the thick wall here is not an actual mesh so if we switch here and zoom in we don't have an edge that we can select here because this side of this object is not an actual mesh it's a representation of a mesh so in order to be, to have an edge here to select we need to apply this but because we applied the modifier in object mode we switch back to object mode and now i'll click apply switch back to edit mode with tab and now as you can see this is an actual mesh and now we can do what we just did and you might be wondering what is this yellow thing right here you probably don't have it and that's because the tool we have selected here is bevel so yours is probably here and so this is what you can see so if i hold down shift to select this as well with this selected and this let's select that and that and that holding down shift select that and that and now we have all of them selected i'll go ahead and hit Control b and now we can bevel it you can just scroll up or down to increase the smoothness of the bevel so let's put it right there if now if i now hit tab i think now 
it's awesome. Control S to save that. All right, so now we're ready to do some lighting, add a backdrop and render this gas cylinder. So right now we're viewing it in solid mode. When we added materials, we were viewing it in material preview, but now to render it, we need to switch to rendered mode. So there we go. But now it seems I already have a sun here. So I just select it and delete it. So this is what you probably have on your 3D viewport. So let's go ahead and add a backdrop. So I'll just hit shift A, mesh plane. And here's the plane, S for scale, then 10 on the numpad, just one and zero. There we go. And now the reason it looks like this is because we don't have light. When rendering your object, it's always a must to have light in your environment. So let's go ahead and add a light with shift A, light. We can add a point light, sunlight, spotlight, or area light. So let's go ahead and add an area light. Hit G, Z, G to grab it, Z to constrain it in the Z axis up to that point then i'll hit s to increase to scale it up then let's go here to this data icon so we can play around with the light so let's go ahead and increase the intensity as i increase the number here you will notice the light is the light intensity is also increasing let's zoom in uh, let's go ahead and add another, maybe let me duplicate it, shift D and I'll just drop it there, change to top view, G, uh, this is the Y direction, I want to bring it here, then let's hit 1 to view it from the front, I want to rotate this R to hit it from that side just like that then i'll duplicate this shift d then escape to drop it right where it is switch to front again with numpad one g carry it up to there then rotate it just like that it's starting to take shape let me select this hit tab to switch to edit mode let me select those two edges, E for extrude, and then Z to constrain it to the Z axis, just like that. And now we have two walls. So the next thing I want to do is, let's see if we can add, we're just winging it. So let's see if we can, if we add a sun, how does it look? No, let me remove that sun. Select this light, increase it to maybe 150. Let me take this and pull it upwards. GZ. Scale it up. Maybe 100. And let's say 200. Just want to illuminate this part. And then let's add some, let's add a spotlight, G, while it's still selected, G, Z. I'll place it right there. Let's increase the intensity. Maybe to 150, let's see what 150 looks like. What about 500? Shift A, let's add another one. Point light, G, Y, G, Z. Let's increase the intensity. Duplicate it with Shift D. Constrain it to the Y axis and put it on this other side. While this is selected, 
I'll select this as well while holding down shift, then shift D to duplicate the two. Then I'll hit rotate R in the Z axis. And maybe I'll drop them down a little bit to reduce this shadow. So with this selected G, Z. And let's increase this to maybe a hundred. And now, as you can see, the lighting is starting to reveal the gas cylinder as we expect. And it's all a matter of playing around with the lights. So let me select that G, Y, G, Y, bring it closer. Let me select this G, X, just like that. And these are not touching by the way. The gas cylinder is not really touching the floor. So I'll select this, then G, Z, holding down shift. Just like that. Of course, you can add materials to the backdrop if you want. I'll select this. Uh, let's see materials. Concrete. And let's unhide it so we can find some nice concrete. Maybe this. We're applying it to. Yeah, just like that. That's much better. Control S to save. So basically this is what you need to do. But of course this is not perfect. It's up to you to take your time and play around with the lights. Maybe add some more lights or increase the intensity on some of these lights we've already added. Maybe this should be 100. Or maybe let's say 200. Yeah, just something like that. Let's select that. 200. We're just trying to make this room more illuminated. Let's make this 500. What about 1000? One 800. No, 600. All right, so at least now you get the drill. We're preparing the scene in order to be able to render it. And now, now that we've added the lights and I would expect you will continue experimenting until you have the perfect lighting, let's add a camera because you can't render without a camera. So shift A, camera. It's been added to where the cursor is. So G, Z while it's still selected. Let me switch to top view, G, and let's put this here. Now, if I hit zero on the numpad, we will look through the camera. But now if we try to rotate or zoom in and out, let me hit zero again. If we zoom in and out, even the camera is zooming in and out. So we want to go to item, no view, lock to object. So let's lock to camera view. And that means if we're orbiting or zooming in and out, we're zooming in and out through the camera. That will allow us to position our camera exactly where we want to position it before we render. So let me just put this here. I think that's a good spot. Let's collapse this. Control S. And you can add multiple cameras or switch over to different angles and render as many as we have. So now let's assume we're satisfied with the lighting and the camera angle. Let's go inside the render settings. And now we're rendering with EV. I want to switch to cycles because it produces much better quality renders. So cycles. Of course, it takes up more resources 
takes up more computer resources, but it produces much better quality renders. So I want to say I will render with my GPU. Under render, we can say denoise because we don't want to see this noise when we render it. You can see some grain on the image. The next thing we need to do is go under the output properties and you can choose the size you want to render here with the resolution. I'm going to render 18, 1920 by 1080. I want to leave it as a PNG. I'll just leave these settings intact. But I want to choose where I'm going to output it to, this, the folder in which we will save it. So let's go inside gas cylinder. Let me render it. Let me save it right here. Accept. And one more thing. Let's go back inside the render settings here. And let's the more the higher the max samples, the higher the quality of your render. But the more it's going to take a toll on your computer. It's going to use up more resources. So we can reduce this to something like 512 maximum samples. Uh, you can Google that or find out more about it on YouTube. So with that, I'm going to hit Control S. And it's ready now. So I'll just go ahead and hit image save as then i'll just give it the name gas cylinder save as image and that's how to model a basic gas cylinder of course this is not perfect we could have done much better as you can see the pattern right here the texture pattern on the background seems to be unrealistic and we would have expected it to just be one single texture without this very even pattern in the background but th that's something you can always learn to do as you improve your blender skills if you enjoyed this video i would really appreciate it if you gave it a like and if you want to be notified every time i publish a brand new tutorial or course go ahead and hit the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next class peace